magic. It's in the title of the show. And it's a pretty big part of the show itself. There's no shortage of magic being used to float stuff around in any given episode, among other things. So, in honor of Unicorn Appreciation Day, the holiday that I just made up, let's spend some time and go over all the elements it takes to put the magic in Friendship is Magic. It must be the unicorns! They're doing it with their awesome magic! First off is the effect on the horn, which is just a little 10-frame cycle with some gradients applied. Let's start with the main shape, which I drew out here. I really don't have any tips on how to draw wave cycles like this, since all I did was trace it off of screen caps. I did try to use as few points as possible to make it easier to manipulate and follow the waves up through the frames. I then copied the frames to a new layer and used the Edit Multiple Frames tool to uniformly scale down all the frames at once. Then we can copy and paste those lines back into the original layer and fill everything in with the Paint Bucket tool to make solid inner and outer shapes, like this. Now we can start building the final artwork. On another new layer, I drew a rectangle with a radial gradient, with the alpha turned down to put a hole in the middle, and use the transform gradient tool to adjust the position. Then we can use the inner shape we made as a mask and make the whole thing into a symbol. The outer shape is really the same deal as the inner, but with a linear gradient. Then we combine those two symbols into one more symbol, and that's it. Looks pretty good. All it's missing are the little sparkles. Oh, yes! Sparkle always does the trick, does it not? I drew out one little shard and copied it a few times to build up a sparkle. Then I can convert it to a symbol, then go inside and animate it just by scaling and moving each piece every couple frames. There's no hard or fast rules on how these are built, so feel free to experiment and see what works. There's not a lot written on traditional effects animation. I do highly recommend Joseph Gillen's Elemental Magic books if you're interested in animating splashes, flames, or sparkly pixie dust stuff. There's also a link to his and another interesting effects blog in the description. Here's a few more sparkles that I built. And you're not just limited to this, of course. Here's a really cool one I just traced off of the screen caps. Inside the magic symbol, I extended things out a couple of loops to make it a 30 frame cycle and dragged in some sparkles starting at different times. If the animation goes past the last frame, I just put those extra frames back at the beginning. So here's the final effect laid over a screen cap of Twilight. Well, that does it for the effect on the horn, which can easily be animated along with the head, reused over and over, as well as tinted and reused on other characters. But what about the magic effect on objects? Is that done the same way? Thankfully, no. The magic effect used on objects and such is custom for each instance, so you can't go through all this every single time. And you can see how the effect is sort of fluid, and if two objects are close enough, they just melt together. Which we can't do with this method, or at least not easily. It's actually not that hard of an effect to pull off, but we'll need to venture out of Flash and into After Effects to do it. So let's start by making a comp to put whatever elements we want to apply the effect to. We can go Composition, New Composition, or you can click the Make Comp button. I'll call it Input, and we'll set it to whatever our final output size will be. In my case, that's 1280 by 720 square pixels, 24 frames per second. And let's make it like a minute long to cover any potential scene that might come up. Having this as a comp instead of just a layer means we can easily swap the contents in and out without having to change anything in the effect. I just drew a few shapes with the shape tool to act as a placeholder for now. Let's drag our input comp into another new comp and call it magic. So let's add a simple choker, effect, mat, simple choker. This can be used to expand or contract the shape's edges. We'll drag it out to about negative 50. Now like the effect on the horn, we want to create a hole to see the original through when we lay this on top of it. We'll drag out another copy of the input comp onto the first. Go to the track mat for the bottom layer and set it to alpha inverted. This is a good start, let's soften the edges some. We'll add another simple choker on the top layer, and set it to about negative 15 to pull it out a little farther, and add a blur. Effect, blur and sharpen, fast blur. And set that to about 20. Let's pre-compose those two layers into a new comp, which I called Matt, for some reason. The reason for putting this in a separate comp is so when we distort the shape later, it'll also distort the inside of the shape instead of just the outside. So let's start whipping this effect into shape by changing the color. Effect, Generate, Fill, and we'll set it to a sort of purpley twilight color. Now for the actual distortion. Effect, Distort, Wave Warp. That'll give us these wavy edges, and it animates automatically. 
going through the parameters, we'll leave wave type the same. You can fiddle with the wave height and width depending on how far away the effect is supposed to be from the viewer, but I think 6 and 35 is a good start. Direction can depend on the angle it's shot, but 90 is a good default, and we'll leave the speed at 1. If you look at the effect in the show, it has a semi-transparent edge to it that actually tints the object it's affecting, so we'll need one more layer for that. To achieve that, we'll drag out another copy of our input comp and label it Tint. We basically want something similar to our mat comp, but without the track mat to put the hole in it. We can just copy the effects, the simple choker, the fill, and the wave warp, and paste them onto this layer. Then we'll add another simple choker to bring it out another 15 pixels or so. And it looks like we'll have to drag the fill down to the bottom of the effect stack. And finally, let's hit the T key and take the opacity down to about 25%. We're basically done, but since this is an effect that's intended to be reused, let's take a few more steps now to make it more user-friendly down the road. Let's add a null, layer, new, null object, and label it controls. Then we can go into the expression controls, either in the effects menu or here in the search menu, and drag in controls for all the parameters we want to manage. Color control for the fill, angle control for the direction, slider controls for the height and width, etc., etc and we'll link the effects to these controls. Let's lock this window so it doesn't change when we click around. If we go into each effect and find the parameter we want to link to, alt-click on the stopwatch and use the pick whip to link it to the control layer. I'll skip ahead so you don't have to watch me do this another dozen or so times. This way effects on both the matte and tint layers stay synced up. You see if I change the color here it changes both layers at the same time and we have all the controls we need in one place so we don't have to go hunting through different layers. As an added detail, I also put a small wiggle expression on the speed to make the animation feel a little less mechanical. So let's try out our new effect with a practical example. I made a quick mock-up of this abacus shot in Flash and rendered it out as an image sequence. I then singled out just the parts we're applying the effect to, these four beads here, and rendered out a PNG sequence, which I called Mask for some reason, with an alpha channel. And when you do this, be sure to render the full document size. Now before we leave Flash, let's do the sparkle effect. In a new symbol, I'll build a little patch of some different sparkles, roughly the shape of what we're affecting, with varied sizes and starting at different times. I made it another 30 frame loop like I did with the horn. Then I'll make a copy of the layer I want to attach it to and just swap the sparkles for the original symbol so it has the same animation. And I can change the start frame of the cycle to offset the timing if I want to reuse them. And I did. We'll render all this out in its own pass as a PNG sequence as well. Now back in After Effects I imported the image sequences. You may have to go into the interpret footage setting to ensure the correct frame rate. And I placed the mass sequence in our input comp and deleted the placeholder. Since the angle of this shot is a bit tilted, I'll change the direction setting to about 60 degrees. Let's make a new comp out of our full render. Then we can add the magic comp and the sparkle pass, and finally animate the opacity on the magic and sparkle layers to fade them in and out. And here's the composite of the final shot. There! Now you can build your own reusable magic effects. Or you can just use my versions, which are available in the description. Either way, go out there and make this the best Unicorn Appreciation Day ever. <laughs>